Shalom. First off, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, and to all my brothers out here preaching this truth to you, I say Shalom. This is Amatazar from the Chicago camp, coming back at you again with another lesson entitled Pretty Woman. Now, this is going to be a short lesson, <laughs> but um, boy, the pride of these women is something else. Um, just the other week, you had um, a list that was circulated by these proud women, a list of the places that um, they don't want to be taken on a first date. All right. So you had the whole Applebee, not the Applebee's, but the uh, Cheesecake Factory uh, situation where you had, I don't know, it looked to be an Elamite man. I don't know if he was Elamite or not, but he took a old nigga woman to uh, the Cheesecake Factory and uh, she went live and was like, oh, I know he didn't. He took me to the Cheesecake Factory and I look like this. And she was so haughty and prideful, all right, like she was too good to be eating at the Cheesecake Factory. Now, this just uh, sent a wave of, um, a, a wave of, uh, what do you call it, uh, memes and everything else. And then you had all these ridiculous, worthless women post all the places that they don't want to be taken on the first date. So basically, if it's a chain restaurant, because it was pretty much all the chain restaurants on there. If it's a chain restaurant, they don't want to be taken to. You got to take them to upscale. And this is these are worthless women, okay? These are women that are absolutely worthless. I tell you, I, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. When you encounter a, a woman um, that, that she's so high-minded, whether it's on her beauty, whether it's her education, um, I saw how much uh, student loans she got in, uh, how much she in debt with the student loans. All right. Also, um, you get on the conversation of uh, abortions. These women then ejected all type of babies out their ass. All right. So therefore, um, you know, I mean, I'm just saying, if you want to, you want to break them down, ask them these questions. Because these are the questions that make them reflect, you know. On on um, you know how damn dumb they are, okay? Because they that uh so called college uh degree don't mean a damn thing when you you know a hundred thousand dollars in debt, you know, and she's trying to pass off her virtue and try to make you think she's worth something. She then injected about five six babies out of her ass, okay? That's that's what you're dealing with here in this kingdom, okay? All right. Um, even my own, even my own son, I, I try to teach my son, hey, listen, if this girl in any way, shape or form ever tries to make you feel jealous or tries to put a man or the idea of another man uh, to make you jealous, we walk away from her immediately. OK, so this this uh, particular lesson was inspired. I was at the uh, I went to, to Sam's Club all right, to buy some water. There was a woman in the section uh, where I was getting the water, and she actually favored my cousin. So I just said, hey, I said, you look just like my cousin. And the woman said, pretty woman. As supposing, you know, that she's pretty. <laughs> she's like, pretty woman. If, if, if your cousin looks like me, I'm a pretty woman. That's basically what she's saying. If your cousin looks like me, she's pretty because I'm a pretty woman. And the pro I, I didn't know what to think. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, these women out here is crazy. That The pride is ridiculous. So that right there just uh, kind of like led me to uh, this lesson. OK, and that's why this lesson is entitled Pretty Woman. This is Isaiah 3 and 16. It says, moreover, Yahweh said, behold, the daughters of Zion are haughty. And walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking with, and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and Yahweh will discover their secret parts. 
So there's a lot being said here in these two verses. Okay. Um, one of the points is it says that the daughters of Zion are haughty. Okay. They're haughty. Well, what is haughty? And when you do the uh the search on haughty, H thirteen sixty one, Gaba. To be high, be exalted, to be high, lofty, lofty, tall, to be exalted, to be lofty, to be lofty of Yahweh's ways, good sense. Well, not in that form. Uh, to be haughty, to be arrogant in the bad sense, to make high, exalt, okay? So this is talking about exalting oneself and to be arrogant, all right? Lift it up in their own eyes. And that's what's going on here. Okay. She she was haughty. Okay. Um also the Judite woman, right, is also cursed. All right. The crown of the it says, I will it says, therefore the Lord will smite with the scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and Yahweh will discover their secret parts. All right, so they can't grow no hair. All right. And that box is wretched. OK, that box ain't right. This is Isaiah 32 and nine. It says, rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters, and give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall be trouble. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail and the gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at ease, and be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you, and make you bare, and gird sackcloth upon your loins. All right, you women are going to be troubled, okay? We're inching closer and closer and closer, all right, to Jacob's trouble, all right? And in Jacob's trouble, you're going to be, basically, men are going to gather themselves together, all right, and hunt you down. All right, you're going to be hunted down. All right, you're going to be used and abused and then eventually eaten because of the lack of bread. Okay. Micah 7 and 10, it says, Then she that is my enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is Yahweh thy power? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. See, these, these women are filled with pride, and um, they are our enemies, okay? These are the same women that use Esau's system. You get married. If you get Esau married, right? When I say Esau married, I'm talking about going to the justice of the peace and getting a license from the state that you live in. That's, that's being Esau married. Now, when you're Esau married, now you're subject to Esau being the third party in your union. And anything you produce in that union. And if you happen to get divorced, you're still Esau is going to tell you the terms in which you're divorced. You divorce a woman, you can't you can't get rid of her in this in this kingdom. This woman can still be subject to payment. You can be subject to payments to this woman through child support, okay, which is illegal. All right, which is actually the Supreme Court has found um unconstitutional, right? Um, you, you can be subject to alimony. Imagine being with a woman. All right. And this woman don't love you or respect you. And even, and she, she says, say she wants a divorce. You give it to her. Guess what? She could still get alimony from you depending on whether or not she worked or not. And you'll be, you'll be paying alimony for the rest of your life to a woman you're not even with. This makes no sense at all. This place it's not our rest, and this place will destroy you. That's that's Micah 2 and 10 with a sword destruction. Um, in, in this uh in this uh kingdom, you can be divorced, all right, and, and that child, the court will force you to pay for that child to go to college. Now let's think about this. It's supposed to be a free society, and it's your choice whether or not you choose to send your, your child to college or not. But Esau will mandate it in the court and force you to send your kid to college. 
Meanwhile, it's, it's kids all all everywhere, all over. Uh, you know that 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 uh, you can run into ain't being forced to to go to college, or for that parents are being forced to spend money to send them to college. What is that? I'm I'm telling you, this 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 whole this pride in this woman op- opened up, uh, you know that can of uh, whip ass so to speak. This is Sirach 25 and 21. It says, stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure. Okay? Now, we know that uh, the beauty of a woman uh, lift, lifts a man's continence and he loveth nothing better. But the scripture here says, stumble not. All right? So, um, you can't allow yourself, okay, to let the beauty of a woman, you know, uh, stop you or, or change your heart when it comes to the Lord and his work. OK, so the beauty counts for nothing. All right. The beauty counts for not for nothing if it's not in its proper pay, place. You can have a beautiful demon. OK. So this woman, this woman says she was a pretty woman, basically. All right. And in closing, this is Proverbs 31 and 30. It says favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. OK, vain meaning worthless. But a woman that feareth Yahweh, she shall be praised. Okay? That's the real beauty. The real beauty is the is the is the woman who fears Yahweh. Okay? That's wisdom in fearing Yahweh. So <clears throat> this has been pretty woman. <laughs> okay. Watch out for these pretty women. <laughs> Watch out for these pretty women. I pray that this lesson has been edifying. Until the next one, Shalom.